Hey guys, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I thought I'd give a little bit of a, a vlog a try and just take you with me on what I would do in a normal painting session and a little bit about what I'd do in my normal day. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. The piece that I'm going to be working on today is a commission piece. So I posted a colourful lion that I did about six months ago and that went to a collector in America and they have commissioned a new piece of a bald eagle in the same style. So my plan is to show you a little bit of my process and just generally talk about what's going on in my life a little bit and see how we go. So I'm going to start this one by doing a little bit of tracing. Because it's commission I just wanted to speed up the process and get straight to the painting and I'm going to use some carbon transfer paper to help me do it. Place the carbon paper and because it's such a big piece I'm just taking two pieces together with a bit of masking tape and then I want to position my carbon paper in the centre of my canvas and then I'm just going to tape it to the sides. This is a 22 inch by 18 inch canvas and this is the piece that I'm going to be doing today. Perfect. Then I'm going to get a pencil. Some people ask if trading is cheating and no my dad always says when I trade something he goes you're cheating again. But I don't think it is. I think if you've got the tools use them. I could spend hours getting this proportionally correct. I know I can do it. In fact, it probably wouldn't even take hours, but I know that this is going to be a lot quicker and a lot easier. And I can actually get into the fun bit, which is the painting and the rendering, which is, I suppose, the difficult bit of the painting process. And I can do it a lot faster this way. So if you want to trace, trace. Obviously, if you're trying to get better at drawing, then don't trace because you want to practice more of your drawing ability but if you're just trying to paint and create something and just get that creative like juices flowing then just trace and get into the good stuff quicker. I'm going to take this off now and see what we're left with very carefully because I can reuse all of the paper again. Right so I've got my palette at my side of me and I'm just going to start by using a bit of a Prussian blue and I'm just going to start painting in some of those darker areas. I'm using a combination of a reference photo that's quite real and then actually an AI generated image that I wanted just to give me an idea of the colours and I'm going to use a combination of both of them to create something better and different to both of them. So it's almost like a combination of the two. Like I'm, I'm not massively into AI art in terms of creating art and selling it because I do think it does actually really draw on other people's work. Um, I'm not going to go into it massively because I don't actually know that much about it but I am just drawing on inspiration from the AI artwork. I'm not copying it directly. I'm just using it for inspiration on colour schemes really. Inspiration on colour schemes and just some patterns and techniques. Really where I'm drawing most of my sort of knowledge from and my idea of the drawing and painting is from the reference photo which I got from Pixabay if you're wondering. So I like the lighting a little bit more on the AI image so I am going to draw on the lighting a little bit more. There's something just so satisfying about putting the eye in, it just makes it feel more complete and finished. Obviously, there's still loads to do. Once that's dry, the next stage is all about adding colours over the top in very, very thin washes. Just gonna get my lion picture up for inspiration. It's up on my website, Studio Wildlife. That's how lazy I am, I can't be able to find the picture, I'm just looking for the picture on my website. And I'm going to use that for inspiration with the colour scheme. So I'm going to start with some thin washes of colour. So I'm going to start with some yellow first. And I'm also going to get some water in a spray bottle. Just give it a quick misting. And then start to just come in and put 
some of that colour down. The beak is going to be mostly yellow, a bit of that yellow going off into the background. F photo, 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 photo. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, you're going to be mostly white, a little bit yellow up there, a bit yellow down here. Okay, then a little bit of green. I give that brush a good clean. I also saw this really cool tool on TikTok that I thought I'd show you guys. Um, it's a brush rinser. I'm actually pretty impressed with how it works. It doesn't completely clean my brush, but if I use it with a combination of a water pot and the tool, it makes cleaning my brushes so much more simple. bit more of this purple in the background nearly tripped over my stool okay then I want a little bit of my darker blue let's go a lot darker it's gonna be quite hard to do actually while it's still so wet I'm just gonna dry it off using a hairdryer The next part of the process involves putting down some more solid looking saturated colours over the eagle, give it a bit of structure, give it a bit of form, just following the colours that I'd put down for the background wash. And of course this first layer wouldn't be complete without using a toothbrush, an old one, not your current toothbrush, to add some splashes and splodges all over the eagle and the background. My palette's covered in paint and I've got to wait for this layer to dry. So I think that's as good a point as any to call it done for today. I'm going to tidy up all this paint and then I'm going to do the other thing that I usually do with my day. And that is take this one out. Charlie, do you want to go for walkies? Do you want to go for walkies? Do you want to go for walkies? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's a new day, well, technically it's a new week. Come on, let's go. I didn't really get much painting done over the weekend. I was actually making a big board for a new project. In fact, I'll show you that right now. So here's the board on my wall easel. It's a little bit messy, but that shouldn't be a problem. I made it myself and it's for a very special project, which I'm hoping will work, but it is a little bit of an experiment. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. This stage of the process is pretty much just about refining and I'm refining with just white paint. So I'm taking, a filbert brush and I'm just using literally some white paint and some water and I'm going to start quite thin at first and then build up to thicker layers as I go but I'm just starting to add a few more patches in I've never actually painted a colourful beak before so we'll see how it goes I'm hoping that some of these like transparent washes and some of the colours that I've put under underneath will actually start to show through and then I'm also going to do a little bit of an extra step at the end which will hopefully bring all the colours back nicely. I've really got into airbrushing and like adding a little bit of airbrush to my paintings recently this is the little airbrush that I'm using. I'll pop a link down to that in the description. It's a great little handheld battery powered airbrush and it's perfect for what I use it for. I've just finished the airbrushing step, so you might just be able to see it there. It's looking a little bit more solid and a little bit more colourful now. 
and I'm really liking how it's looking so far. The next step is just going to be to start adding some like whites and some details on there and then it's just play around with the background and make it all look like one coherent, cohesive piece. This final stage is just reinforcing the impression of those feathers and just building up using that white paint again. Just refining everything, making it look a little bit more solid and just having that colour subtly there underneath the whites that I'm drawing. I'll also add a few little drips just to finish it off and add a white vignette which I feel really frames the piece. Then it's just a case of separating the eagle from the background with a little bit of a white backlighting and then I'm pretty much ready to call it done. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's vlog or for this week's vlog. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.